YouTubers, this is um, Nurse J at Nursing the Truth, and I hope everyone's having a great day today. It's a Thursday, and we have one more day, and it will be at the end of the week. So, today we're going to talk about serapis. So, if no one is familiar with the term serapis, um, that was a Greek god under the name of Ptolemy the first. See, when Alexander the Great and his father, Philip of Macedonia, came in and took over Egypt in 323 BCE, um, Alexander the Great gave Ptolemy, um, that was his general, the um, pharaoh of Egypt. He was the very first Greek European pharaoh ever in the history of the Egyptian um, pantheon or monarchy. So, anyway, what happened is when he was um, the pharaoh, he wanted everyone to worship him. Well, you got to understand, after thousands of years of them worshiping their own pantheon of gods, like Isis, Osiris, Horus, and Set, and all of that, they did not want to worship a white man. And that is very understandable, because they had never done that before. So, he wanted to put in a name that would help them to get used to him and part of his name was apis like the apis bull um the apis bull um, was a sign of the taurus um, in the zodiacal sign and the bull was a very um worship symbol there um like hathor um the cow um a bull god um in that nature so anyway um he was worshipped and they had a lot of um, temples built to him, the Serapium, that are still standing to this day. Um, large um, temples and, and columns that were built to him. And there was just a lot of problems surrounding that, like I said, because, um, you know, they did not want to worship him. And you have to understand that for thousands of years, you have someone coming in um, you know, saying you have to worship me, I'm a man, and they were never used to that because they're just used to worshiping these deities, the sky, the moon, and that sort of thing. Now, when they had the, um, oh, yeah, this is what I was going to tell you, too. Um, he was called Ptolemy the first Sotir. Um, and what Sotir means, or S-O-T-E-R means savior, so he's called Ptolemy the first Sotir, which means Savior. Um, he took up the name Mary Amun Septipanra, and um, that meant beloved God, um, Mary Amun, and then Septipanra meant chosen by God. So um, you see how that would make the Egyptians mad. Now, um, in Memphis, the Malkite Coptic Egyptians said that they would consecrate him to the priesthood. And, but these people that were sellouts and um, they didn't want to be killed. And they made an image of him named Serapis. And Serapis, um, Egyptian, um, in 350 BCE. And he was called Serapis Christos in the great Greco-Roman world. And you gotta understand that all of this um, was done way before um, the Jesus um, character in the Bible. Now, also Serapis was a name taken from Osiris um, and combined with the word Apis, the bull, like I told you before, and that was a combination of Serapis. Now, what is very curious about this is we were always told in the New Testament that when Jesus was um, living and walking around the earth and the dis disciples and that these were called the very first Christians, especially when you get into the workings of Paul um, where he's talking about the first Christians were at Antioch and Antioch is in Edessa, Syria. Now, in 134 CE, Hadrian to Servanus, um, which you got to understand it's Emperor Hayden, Hadrian, that was writing to Servanius. And um, it says, Hadrian refers to the Alexandria, Egypt, worshippers of Serapis, calling themselves the bishops of Christ. And he stated, in Egypt, 
which you commended to me, my dearest Savanius, I have found to be wholly fickle and inconsistent and continually wafted about by every breath of fame. The worshipers of Serapis here are called Christians and those who are devoted to the god Serapis. I, I call themselves the bishops of Christ. And at the Council of Nicaea in 325, um, C.E. Constantine ordered all the books to be burned. And at this time, this particular Serapis took over um, the Jesus cult. Now, some things that uh, Serapis was called, um, he was called Christ. Um, this was the only begotten Son of God. He was the Holy Savior. He was born of a virgin. He was a redeemer of sins. He resurrected the believers in their spirit. He gave the gift of everlasting life. And he was called Logos, the Word. And he was called the Good Shepherd. He was called the Healer of, um, of the World, Atoning Sacrifice. Resurrected from the dead. The cross was a symbol of his worship. Spoke prophecy and fulfilled it in a miracle healing, healer giving sight to the blind. And all believers in him are reclaimed. In the first century, um, Jesus is not mentioned by a single Greek or Roman historian. Um, religious scholars and politicians, philosophers, or poets. Now you have to understand that even the um, works in Josephus, in his um, complete works, um, people are saying that that was interpolation. Um, there were tons of um, Jesus is in the first century in Judea and um, to actually pinpoint a person down by that name and saying that that was the one in, in the testimonies that they're writing about is almost like trying to look for a needle in a haystack. Um, they also said that um, we're going to talk about a little bit about you know, free will and sin, along with all these doctrines. Now, in the beginning, they taught that man can do good and evil all on his own, and there was nothing that could be forced him to do either one or the other. Now, Bishop um, Augustine turned Catholic and brought original sin, um, which was heresy, um, and since the Gnostics were persecuted. So really, the um, original sin was made up um, to make you feel like you were a sinner and that you need someone to save you, okay? Which the Gnostics um, did not teach that at all. Um, they taught that, um, that the divine source or the divine spirit or soul was within you. Um, so that was kind of how it was turned around Gnostic wise. So in the first um, in the first century, the Christian church, um, the original sin was not taught. Okay, so isn't that funny? In the first century, the original sin was not taught, and the church made that up from the her from the heretic, and it was said by introducing the original sin doctrine, the church could claim all the power over the nations and over the churches. So you see how Roman Catholic Church did that to make you feel like you were born in original sin, come in, you know, be into the clergy and all the lies and all the doctrine, get you dumbed down, and feel like you had to come in every week and give your money to, for purgatory and, and all this other kind of crap. And so we're still in that type of life cycle now. Um, and the Roman Catholic Church introduced Satan, okay? The little horned man with his little tail running around with a pitchfork, okay? Original sin, and uh, Christianity has been in place since 350 um, BCE, that, excuse me, 350 um, AD, okay? Um, so you have to understand that the afterlife and all that was... Um, talked about in Egypt, 
Okay, so Christianity, this thing about afterlife resurrection was, was you know, barred from um, Egypt. So if they want to say that's a new thing, then they're pagans, okay? Um, the book of Revelations, they want to tell you that it was written about, say, 120 uh, CE, but in actuality it was written about 1200 CE. See, when we went into the Dark Ages, like 500 to like 1500, there was a thousand year span to where they had a good old little uh, cookout to where they can take all the scriptures, scramble them up, take things out, put things in, change the stories, okay? So it was it was just a very sick, perverted thing. Um, the doctrine of the original sin states that we came from an imperfect God. So... Really, I mean, you think about it. I mean, original sin. So if God is all-powerful, all-knowing, perfect, never makes a mistake, what he says goes, then this is a mind screw because if he's perfect, we are made in the image of God and he's perfect, then why are we in original sin? That must have meant that God himself was imperfect. So think about that. The Gnostics said that God, um, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, okay, let's go backwards. Okay, so the Gnostics were talking about the God of the Old Testament. Let's just go back, just rewind. The Gnostics were talking about the God of the Old Testament, okay? And they said that Yahweh was basically Yahweh Baoth. And that um, he created the material world and he's got us trapped in a prison planet. And that we have the actual divine spark of the universal creator God that is perfect. Okay. Um, and so we were in this um, material body and, they, and these entities have entrapped us. And so we've got to get to the main source of the creator universal God, which um, is, is the sun, okay? Now, you can pick up your Nag Hammadi library, your Nag Hammadi text. You can pick up another book called The Other Bible that has a lot of these um, scriptures in it um, that go totally against what the New Testament is and the Old Testament. These are things that were dug up in Nag Hammadi, Egypt, in 1947, the Dead Sea Scrolls, are, no, I think the Nag is like 45 and the Dead Sea Scrolls 47, something like that. But they're two different time frames. So um, you need to read both of those. Now, I will tell you in the Dead Sea Scrolls, the name Jesus was never mentioned. Never. This particular Jesus that we're looking for in the New Testament was never found. Now, it does mention the teacher of righteousness. Um, it does talk about the Essenes. Um, which, if you do your history, the Essene sect comes back from Egypt and Therapeutae. All of these were from Alexandria, Egypt. Okay? So you need to do your homework on that. Um, you cannot have a perfect God in original sin. And um, the original church said that there was no original sin. So this doctrine of original sin was never taught in, in, in the very beginning, okay? Um, the creation story was not in the original Torah. It was written and placed later in the Bible, okay? So isn't that funny? So it gives them time to work about the creation story from all the other um, mythos. Um, now, a, bish uh, a bishop called Bishop of Hippo, um, he was from North Africa, and he um, was converted in 384 CE, and he was ordained a priest in 391. Um, he was... Um, from Rome, and he was pushing for the doctrine of, of all this that we were talking about, the sin and all. And the religion was called a mystery. That was why each had a high priest to tell a direct, um, a direct doctrine on a daily basis. 
Um, so the basic original sin definition in the fourth century doctrine that said, in the fourth century, it was a doctrine that explains the sin of Adam as being propagated to all his offspring through natural reproduction or divine imputation. Okay, and this was um, the doctrine was um, basically pushed by St. Augustine. Okay, um, so basically that he just got on board, okay. Um, now this, um, Augustine, he, he had a very ugly past and basically from his own desires and his problem with his past, he thought that he would, you know, make everybody else feel his guilt from what he did. Um, he, um, struggled with lust all of his life. He had five mistresses. And, um, he ran around a lot. Um, he, um, we just had a lot of problems, okay? And so, therefore, he was really pushing original sin. And Martin Luther was really an advocate for St. Augustine. And he became a monk and was living under St. Augustine's, um, you know, original sin doctrine. So that's why in the Protestant Bibles you also have original sin, and they all they also teach that as well. So even though Martin Luther broke off from the Roman Catholic Church, he did keep some doctrines. But you got to understand, he also had um, an agenda as well with the Rosicrucians, um, and so that's you know another video. Um, So we have um, Julian of Eclam. Um, he was born in 386 and died in 455. And he said that um, they say also that the, that the impulses and the intercourse of married people were devised by the devil and that therefore those who were born innocent are guilty. And that is by the work of the devil, not of God, that they are born of this diabolical intercourse and that, and this without any ambiguity, ambiguity is Manchism. Okay, guys, well, we will see you tomorrow. I think this is all I have for today. Peace out.